Anyway, getting back to the Suella Braverman question. She at, uh, I think it was her conference, the party conference, used the word about invasion to describe the small boats crisis uh, and um, got hugely criticised by the establishment for that uh, and uh, many of the, the, the liberal liberates, the North London set, and they made a huge noise about it. But uh, according to a poll released yesterday, 51% of people agreed with her choice of words. Not a huge majority, but very indicative that all the critics were pretty wrong to say she was out of touch with people. But does it actually help advance the cause of sorting out the problem of illegal migration and the small boats crisis in particular? I'm very pleased to say now we've got Stephen Wolf, uh, former MEP and migration expert, of course. Stephen, welcome. Ah, good afternoon. So thank you for that. You heard my question, I'm sure. So let me ask you, first of all, uh, your thoughts on the, f word, the use of the word invasion. Is it helpful? Does it actually mean sh we're going to get policies that will change things? Uh, or, 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 or is it just, as it, the critics claim, just stirring up and pandering to uh, an audience to win votes? Well... I, I like to look at it in a couple of ways. First of all, the actual invasions of the U United Kingdom. And the first of all was the Romans. The Romans had 20,000 to a maximum of 40,000 by the time they left. That was a proper invasion. We had 5,000 Normans invaded uh, England and were successful in that. And the Germans planned uh, their operation invasion into the UK with around 10,000 uh, initially. So if you look at the numbers, the numbers of people coming across the channel far su uh, surpass all those uh, attempts and reality in invasions in the UK uh, in, since our history. So I would say in, in terms of numbers, she could be accurate to say it is an invasion. You could also say it's an invasion because of the numbers people who were organized by people smugglers. But where I would have a problem is, unfortunately, I believe that we should control our borders. We should be dealing with the criminals behind the people smuggling gangs and those allowing them to come over into the UK via the boats. So I have a concern when we use the language invasion because it hands over weaponry to the left and those who want open doors to criticise anybody who simply wants to challenge the view that we should be controlling our borders. So I believe that she should be more circumspect in the language. Deal with the facts, deal with what's actually happening, but not give any truck to those on the left who can try and undermine her policies. So the, the substance matters more than the language, which I think most people would agree with you, but others might argue, Stephen, that because this is such a uh, thorn issue, it's, it's right there, it's such an important issue to so many people, that she may be lancing the boil of frustration where many people feel those in Westminster do not understand the quite the impact or seriousness of this issue. In that sense, is there a role for this language? There's a role for certain strong language, and Suela Braveman is very brave, if you take the name from herself, in being able to attack those and address the issue very, very strongly. She's been abused. She's been criticised for her colour. She's been criticised for her beliefs in controlling immigration. And someone like myself, who's mixed race, has a very strong, strong support for her way of dealing with this. I'm just a great believer that... She needs to be strong. She needs to show that kind of uh, capability that there is actually somebody out there listening to the people who really want to have this controlled, understanding where the public are frustrated, but equally at the same time, box clever, box smarter, box in a way that you actually can defeat those trying to oppose your policy whilst enabling those who need the support help along the way. And that's why I think sometimes the language that we use could be used much cleverer. Let me uh, ask you, uh, the First Minister in Scotland has said we should open up safe routes for people coming out of Gaza, uh, like we had safe routes for Syria, we have safe routes for Ukraine. Uh, do you think that uh, it is inevitable that what's happening in Gaza now and in other countries around the world, the problem is always going to end up on Europe's shores, and I don't mean EU Europe, I mean the real Europe, including us, 
that actually uh, it's better to take these head on and, and actually look at safe routes from distressed cu countries? Well, I, I thought very, very hard about this over the past few weeks, bearing in mind that the evidence that we have since 2000 of those people claiming asylum in this country, Nick, is uh, Palestine and those coming from that area are quite a significant number of people each year that we accept under our asylum application process. And I do believe that when you have 2.5 million people s squashed into an area of uh, the Isle of Wight, which isn't very far from where I am, I go walking You're now, describing Gaza, this. basically. I'm describing Gaza, yeah. overbuilt, bombed out, people being killed, children being murdered, then quite frankly, we and the West, as we, if we have a support of Israel, which is important, and it is important to be able to back them, but at the same time, you cannot blame all those people. So who are the Palestinians suffering in that way. So we do have a responsibility. The UN Refugee Convention was exactly for these types of circumstances. And so I think it is appropriate that the West, whilst doing both things, should do the humanitarian thing, as we're already doing. But your point is well made, Nick. At the end of the day, most of these people coming into Europe don't come to the rest of Europe. 75% of all asylum applications are just in four countries the United Kingdom, France, Italy, and Germany. And as for the rest of the globe, America is by far the leading Western nation, followed after that by Canada and other countries who accept them, and like Australia, New Zealand, are minuscule in that sort of sense. So it's going to a smaller number of countries. If we are going to be honest and true to cap capitalise on the UN Refugee Convention, it has to be across the whole of Europe, not just all.